Hi everyone, thanks for coming here today. So I wanna know, how many of you watched the Super Bowl on Sunday? So did I. Yeah, I'm sure most of you know a lot about football, more than I do at least. As much as I love to watch America's greatest and favorite sporting event, football has just never made sense to me. It's not that I dislike it or find it boring. I just don't really understand it. I guess you could compare it to a locked box. I know it's full of great things, but I can't find the key. I bet that's how many of you feel about classical music. So today, I'd like to share one of my favorite pieces with you, Robert Schumann's Piano Suite Papillon. Schumann's music has always held special meaning for me. Even before I was born, my parents decided to name me after his wife, Clara, a piano virtuoso whose presence in Robert's life inspired some of his most beautiful melodies. Although I can only dream of living up to my namesake, I quickly learned to appreciate her husband's music. Robert composed Papillon in 1831, after a hand injury put an end to his dreams of achieving fame as a concert pianist. Schumann turned to composing instead, and Papillon took shape alongside two of his most famous creations, Floristan and Eusebius. These two were not musical compositions, but rather fictional characters who appeared in Schumann's early critical writings and later in his music. The impetuous, passionate Floristan and the wistful, contemplative Eusebius. As you can imagine, they were often at odds. Papillon, French for butterflies, was only Schumann's second published piano work, and as such, reflects his exploration of new musical concepts, namely, the relationship between music and literature. When you first hear it, it's clearly a beautiful piece, but to Schumann, it meant something much more. Papillon is Schumann's musical interpretation of German author Jean-Paul's novel Die Fliegeljahre, or The Awkward Age, which, if you ask me, is a pretty accurate description of everyone's high school years. So as I play the first few pieces from Papillon, I want you to use your imaginations and forget your listening to a TEDx talk in the ICI, if only for a moment. Imagine yourself at a masked ball in a grand 19th century palace. Here, we'll meet the duo at the heart of the story, twin brothers Walt and Wult. The names here can get a little confusing, so bear with me. It's no coincidence that their personalities mirror those of Schumann's own Floristan and Eusebius. Walt is a dreamer, while Wult is a pragmatic flute player. The brothers enter the ballroom in costume, and behind their masks lies all their youthful hope. Hope for adventure, happiness, and maybe even love. the beautiful maiden, Vina. She's young, she's pretty, and both Walt and Wult are in love with her. In the first piece I'll play, Walt recognizes her under her disguise, and in the second one, their eyes meet for the first time.
by now, Valt has gotten Vina's attention, and his brother Vult faces a difficult choice, whether to pursue Vina for himself or watch in silence as his twin wins her over. Most more selfish people would choose the former, but Vult is a good guy. In fact, he's such a good guy that he even offers to trade disguises with his brother and woo Vina on his behalf. So in the next piece I'll play, you can really hear his indecision and frustration at having to make this choice. But in the one after, Valt and Vina danced their first waltz together. Like all great parties, this one is coming to an end. Eventually, Vult, in his brother's disguise, decides to propose marriage to Vina, who readily accepts. But Vult knows the real object of her affection, so he lulls his brother to sleep with his flute playing and flees the town in the dead of night. The clock in the bell tower strikes six, and the noise of the carnival disperses into the dark. So I'll finish with the finale of Schumann's Papillon, our protagonist's last dance for now. If you listen closely at the end, you can actually hear the six chimes of the bell tower, which I think is really cool.
Thank you guys for being here again. And although Schumann probably won't be replacing Kanye or Taylor on your Spotify playlist anytime soon, I hope that today I've given you the key to understanding this piece. And now it's up to you to unlock the box. And next time you guys encounter something that you don't understand, whether it's that book in English that you have to read, a math problem that you just can't figure out, or even someone's views that aren't like your own, I encourage you to take some time and try to find the key. Thank you.